Hi guys, and welcome back to this Model Engineers workshop. Today in the workshop, we're rounding the corners to round the corner. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, we're going further with the axle pump body. So this is as far as we got last time. So the slots are in, the oil holes in, and the cross hole in with the thread all the way through. Today, I'm going to put this back in the four jaw now. So I might even show you centering that up a little bit. We're then going to put a center in this end where the slots are. And then we're going to pull this out in the four jaw, clamp it by this little bit at the end, put the live center in here. We're going to then make sure we've got this recentered. And then we're going to turn down all these corners. We're going to get this barrel down to just that width, 25.4 millimeters. So we're going to have Interrupted cuts on the four corners. We're going to have an interrupted cut when we start getting into this slot. Uh, won't be too much into this slot because, of course, this is the right width. We just need to round this off. Once we get that rounded off, it'll come out the four jaw. I'll put the three jaw back on the lathe and spin it round, hold it by the round bit then, and then we can turn this end down to those scribed lines there, to that scribed line so that that then also becomes the same diameter as this, 25.4 or thereabouts. And then we need to put a, a spigot on the end of 22 mil of diameter, one that fits into the, the big hole in the flange that we made a couple of videos ago. So all these dings and things off this old piece of brass will disappear and it will start looking a lot smarter. That, that one will probably, that one will remain. Although once I've got it all to shape, I'll probably just run this up and down on the belt linisher just to clean up whatever's left of the old surface finishes. Right guys, off to the lathe, get this in the four jaw, get it all centered up again. And uh, yeah, when I get this in the, in the lathe, I'll bring you back. Right guys, so just spent a few minutes getting this into the, ch the four jaw chuck. I've already done that one center to center. I'm now going to, oh sorry, I've done this one center to center. So we're now gonna go here and uh, hopefully you'll be able to get the drift of what I'm doing. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a zero on the dial. Hopefully on camera number two there, you'll be able to see the dial. This is the way I do it anyway. Just zero that out. Being of course a rectangular piece of stock, you can't just spin the chuck. Uh, using ups and downs as a reference, of course, even though we're working forward and backwards. Quick light pull on to the Indicator, put it back. So we were, we're out quite a bit by the look of things. So let's just go back. Oops. All right, so we go here. You can see on the dial, I'm on zero here and number four on the little dial. Go back again. I'm on a number four, but I'm on 14. That says to me that. Yep, this is this jaw's too high, that jaw's too low. So the trick, of course, is to go back there, loosen this jaw, loosen the lows, tighten the highs. That is quite loose. Okay, so I'll just go back to this one. Now, hopefully, the dial should go that way if I've got it right. I'm just now I'm going the wrong way. Okay, so you have to think. Let's just go the other side. Go back and yeah, that's better. Let's give that a bit of a tighten up. Now, this is the thing go past the zero, come back to it. Always come from the same direction, get as close to zero as you feel like it. So, zero here, four on the small dial, and then we go to here, and you can see we're well past four here on the small dial at 40. So that means this is low. So I'll loosen that one off a tiny little bit. Go back to this one, unless I've got it wrong again. Probably have. I'll soon find out. No, no, the dial might be moving in the right direction. I'm going to take out the half of the difference. Go back to your starting point. I'm going to get this vertical as your, as your reference. So ups and downs, this is vertical, as close as you can get it every time. 
Now I'm showing four and a half, which is about right on that dial. Approach the zero again from this side. So we're back to two reference points, just so you know exactly where you're at. Go here, and we're going the wrong way. Okay, so you can see it's not as easy as it looks, or it even looks out. So this is high over this side. This is low. I'm looking at it. You can, I can see that this is actually looking down the sides of the jaws, that this piece of brass sticking out is less than that one. Yeah, so let's try that again. We know which direction we've got to move it in now. So loosen that one off. That one back in. Man, it seems, doesn't seem to... Am I getting this totally wrong? I think I must be. So let's go. So let's just zero that back out. That's enough. So I'm on a three now on this side, a three point a three zero. And here I'm on a oh not bad, a three ten. Right. Three six even. So can you remember what I did? That's I think it was that one, wasn't it? Just a case of a tiny little loosen, not much. That'll do it. Go around to this side again. I'm looking for the dial to go that way around. Oh, I got it. got it right. Nope, got it wrong. Okay, so I need to actually just loosen this one a little bit more. There we go. And Got it wrong again, I think. But you get the drift. Just give me it. I'll uh, just get the. There we go. Back to zero. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What was I on? Three zero. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm on a well out. Under two, and under three. Right, I'll stop the camera there for a minute, guys. I'll get this done. Then you don't need to listen to me waffling on, and I'll bring you back when I get it centered. Right, guys, so I've just spent some time getting this as close as I can. So I did this first, then I did that, that second, then I went back, readjusted, went back, readjusted. So now this is within 0 0.01, 0 0.02 of a millimeter. So point, that's what, four ten thousandths, six ten thousandths of an inch, that's close enough for what this is. I've got a center coming up, there we go, uh, in the drill chuck. I'm gonna put a reasonable center in here. Take the drill chuck out, take the center away, put the live center back in, pull this all forward so we're clear of the scratch marks I made on the, the block in the beginning. And uh, so I'll loosen two jaws up and then I'll tighten two jaws up, those two up again, to roughly the same amount. And then we start re-indicating the little bit that's left in the chuck. So let's get this center put in and uh, keep moving on. There we go, guys. That's all that takes, just to put the live center in. Uh, I'll go off camera now, pull this out, get the other end in, re-indicated, and when we're ready for turning, I'll bring you back. Right, guys, so a good few minutes have passed. As you can see now, I've got the center, live center in the, in the end where we put the center drill. I've pulled the material out, got the scribe line there just in front of the chuck jaws. I've spent some time getting this all re-centered again with the tailstock in place so it's kind of pivoting it in the right sort of directions as i look at the tool with the corners as they come past um pretty even 
even enough anyway. And uh, so now I've got to get, you'll notice I've got the tool sticking out quite a bit now because it's the only way I can get past the live center. So it's going to be an interrupted cut because of the corners and the tool sticking out. So it's going to be very light cuts, lots of them. And I'm going to be using the power feed on the on the, the saddle, on the lathe itself, and we're going to get into, literally, this is started, just starting to touch these outer edges because then we're down to diameter. So we're literally taking off the four corners, rounding them off. Uh, right, lathe's running at 700 RPM according to the, the instructions there. Uh, I'm going to wind that out, otherwise that's going to be a hell of a chunk coming off. I'm just going to get the lathe going, do a touch off, pull back, wind it in a little bit and we're going to go under power feed until we just get down to that scribe line there well short of that because then i'll finish off the shoulder uh, when we get down to the diameter that we require so interrupted cuts here when we get further down we'll also have the interrupted cut because of the slots in there and we've got the, the oil hole where the oil pot goes on there so it's going to have to be really really careful i'm just going to just check that yeah that looks right good we're looking good it's all nice and solid and tightened down. Lathe's free running, there's nothing blocking the jaws. Let's get it done. That was the first cut along. Let's have a quick look at the surface we're creating. As you saw, I'll have speeded that up in the uh, in the editing. Yep, those corners are starting to come off, and they all look fairly even. I don't need to measure them. Yep, they are. So we are pretty good on center. I just had to lock the uh, center down just a little bit more. There we go. And. Uh, there's no point in me showing you much more of this. I'll probably record another couple and then speed up again. Uh, once I get it down to size, I'll bring it back. Quick change of plan, guys. Yeah, you can see, hopefully, that those facets, the edges that we're creating here, all nice and even. Nothing's out of line. And they're all even thicknesses. Right, definitely this time, guys. I'll bring you back when I get down to size. Right, guys. So, turned all that down now. Now it's down to 25.2, I think I measured it at just now. Shoulder's been cut in, everything there. All we have to do now is I'm just put a little chamfer on this end, just a tiny one, just to take away the sharp edge. Then we need to flip, take it out, take the four jaw off, put three jaw on, and things start getting a little bit easier from there. Okay, so here goes. <laughs> There we are. That's all that needs. Right. I'll take this out, get the three jar on, and I'll bring you back. 
Okay, so three jaw chains out now, or rather the four jaw chains out for the three jaw. I've got this rectangular part of the body lined up with this jaw. This jaw's as vertical as I can get it. I've got the parting tool in the tool post. Seems a little bit odd, I know. But for later on, when we come to silver cell the flange on, I need a tool which will leave me a nice little scribed line. So I'm just going to, hopefully you can see, I know I can, I'm just going to scratch a line across that. Most of that will remain once uh, we've got this turned, but we just need that little line there to help us line up on the flange when we come to silver solder it. So I'll just straighten up the tool post again. There we go. And we'll change out to our normal cutting tool. And we need to bring the first 11 mil of this down to uh, the same as the other end, the 25.4, 25.3. And then we need to take the first, then we need to do 6 mil of that down to 22, which should be a silver solder fit into the flange that we made uh, in a previous video. Right, uh, we'll get this going and we'll take it from there. Here we go. Okay, you get the idea on that. You've seen it enough times. I'll get you back when I get it done. Right, so there we go. Turned this first 11 mil down to the diameter, same as the block. And then just the first six mil down to a nice easy fit in the flange that we made in the previous video. So that's nice. That's going to be a nice, easy Silver solder fit is that. I'll be able to stand this up in the brazing earth on the flange so its own weight is holding it down. Lots of flux in the circle, in the joint here as well. Heat the whole lot up. Be able to get the silver solder in. Plenty of room at the back. And uh, hopefully we'll get a good fillet in there and a good seal all around. The scribe line I put on is almost vertical at the moment. Tell you what, let's get it back to vertical. Uh, where are we? A oh, horizontal, sorry. That one there. So all I have to do now is scribe a line on the flange itself across the middle and line those up as close as we can. Don't forget we're going to be working upside down. I might have to rethink that. Um, and then it can be silver soldered. After that we've got holes to, holes to drill all the way through and dream and then we've got to do a couple of little uh, counter bores in there, one of which we have to thread and then we have to make a big uh, 3 8 BSP nut to actually go in and close off this end of the pump itself. All right, guys, I'm going to get set up for the silver soldering and uh, I'll get back to you in a bit. Okay, guys, so there it is, out the chuck jaws now. You can see I've turned the end, that's just down to the same diameter as this. This has got the right diameter on it for the flange. Now, can you see this? There you go. You can see that scribed line I put on in the lathe. I've got a similar scribe line on the flange, so you can imagine that all I have to do, line those up, and let's get you back in the center of the screen, the best I can, something like that. Heat the whole lot up, flux it, heat the whole lot up, silver solder, all the way around, that will go by capillary action and it will work its way through. So uh, that's probably gonna be the next job, and then we have to get the whole lot back in the lathe, and then we have to drill it Drill all the way through ream. We've got a couple of uh, different diameters to go to as we go down, one of which gets taps 3 8 BSP for the end plug that goes at the end, that end of the pump. So all these little bits we've been making the last few weeks, if you remember, we made those bits uh, in here. There's the valves. Hopefully you can hear that rattle, rattle, rattle. That's uh, 
the valve shuff shuttling up and down. Uh, this is a commercial fitting that the drawings specified. Whoops, almost lost it. This screws into the bottom here. So I'll just drop that one in. Needs a couple of, I need a couple of ship, shim washers in there so it actually points backwards. This is this one goes in the top here. This will all be sealed down, of course, when I get that far. Use some uh, Loctite sealant or something like that. And this one then screws into this commercial fitting. If I can do watch, I'll cross thread it now. Oh, well, there we go. So, once the flange goes on, and it's all lined up like that, there we are. After weeks of making small parts, we've suddenly got a big bit. Not much left on this one to do now. Literally the bore through here, thread the end of that, the silver soldering of the flange on, of course, make the plug for that end. And then that's the piece made. We've already made the yoke. So we'll have to make the pump ram, which has a little slot in it for an O-ring. All right, guys, uh, give us a tick. I'll be back in a second. Right, guys, so this video is getting a bit long, but there we go. As you can see, it's all a bit loose at the moment. All of a sudden, all the small bits are starting to make a big bit. This is going to be the axle pump for the loco underneath the boiler between the frames. All right, guys, this is the chef saying, as I always do, if you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like or subscribe, hit the bell to get the sub notifications. If there are watchers out there who aren't subscribed, please subscribe. It does me good in my heart and soul as well to know that you're all finding what I'm doing interesting. All right, guys, this is the chef saying, see you later.